this thing on? Yo, what's up guys? We are back here with another video. This week I want to talk about something a little bit different than my usual wheelhouse, and it is one of the most important aspects of filmmaking, and that is color grading. And more specifically, color grading with Film Convert. Now, I discovered Film Convert a couple of years ago. Um, you know, it was one of the main reasons why I actually ended up getting the BMPCC 6K. Uh, if you guys have not checked out Flow at Of Two Lands, huge inspiration of mine. One of the big reasons why I even ended up working with these Blackmagic cameras. And, you know, the first couple of months I've been using this camera, I've been trying to get a sense of what my color grading workflow is going to be. I've tried a number of different LUTs, but, you know, really taking a page out of the handbook that is Up to Lands and Flow. I've always been a huge fan of his grading, so I decided to finally give Film Convert a try. So, just to give you a basic 101 of what Film Convert is, for those of you who are not familiar, it is a plugin that is available for Final Cut Pro X, Premiere Pro, and DaVinci Resolve. Now I use DaVinci Resolve mainly because I work with B-RAW and that codec is native to the DaVinci Resolve software. You can get Film Convert as a plugin for any of those platforms. Now essentially, it is just an effect that you can click and drag over your node in DaVinci Resolve or your footage in Premiere Pro and it essentially gives you a bunch of controls that you otherwise wouldn't have and it gives you a number of different film stocks that you can choose from. So you know, let's just take a look here. Here's the flat image and then film convert on, off, on, off, on. So you get the sense of it. It really helps you to create a more cinematic, buttery smooth, you know, kind of curbs that digital edge uh, that you get with a lot of footage uh, in cameras nowadays. Uh, more so the mirrorless cameras, but with the black magic as well, though it creates a more cinematic film like image, film cover really helps to kind of smooth everything out. And in my opinion, it really helps make your footage pop and kind of give it that cinematic, buttery smooth look that all of us as filmmakers are constantly striving for. So let's go ahead and run a quick clip of last week's short film that I put out where I used Film Convert, and then we'll be back. So I shot that whole film in 120 frames per second at 2.8K in constant bit rate eight to one in RAW. Uh, and then I pulled it in DaVinci Resolve and I graded the whole thing with Film Convert. It's the first short film, really the first film that I've done entirely with this software. So in this video today, I'm going to take you into a behind the scenes look at my workflow. We're gonna keep it very basic, very one-on-one, just to give you a sense of how Film Convert works, how you know I go about editing and grading my footage within DaVinci Resolve. I'm gonna keep it simple. We're gonna be going into more in-depth videos and color grading and DaVinci Resolve in the future, but I really just wanted to share my experience with this new platform, this new software that is going to be my go-to software for grading all of my footage from here on out. So let's go ahead and jump into DaVinci Resolve. So the first thing that we're gonna do here is jump into DaVinci Resolve. Film Convert Nitrate is available for Premiere Pro and Final Cut Pro X. But for me, you know, having worked with Premiere Pro for a number of years, now that I'm working with DaVinci Resolve, it's pretty difficult to go back, especially, you know, since I work with the B-RAW codec, uh, you know, primarily, and it is native uh, to DaVinci Resolve. It just makes my workflow a lot easier. So DaVinci Resolve is broken up into a few different workspaces. This is the media input. Uh, you know, this is your basic timeline. You can scrub through, do all of that. Uh, this is Fusion. We're not gonna be talking about this today, but it's essentially like having uh, Adobe After Effects directly in DaVinci Resolve, which is great. You can essentially take your footage from the timeline, do uh, some Fusion effects to it, and it just, is all in real time. You know, it, I'll be doing some tutorials in future videos as to how I'm using Fusion, but today we're going to be working in uh, the color workspace of DaVinci Resolve. All right, so now that we're in the color editor, the first thing I'm gonna do is just pop off this Film Convert Nitrate 
you know, one of the really cool things about Film Convert Nitrate is it just, uh, once you upload it and download it, it just immediately shows up in your library of effects down here at the bottom. So for me, the first thing I do is I go into Camera Raw, since I'm always working with the V-Raw codec. If you're working with ProRes, this is an unnecessary step. You're not gonna be able to have these options. Um, the first thing I do is make sure the decode quality is at 2864 by 1512. Uh, make sure the color science is Gen 5. And I change the color space from Black Magic Designs Native Color Space to Rec 709. Um, you know, you can mess with your ISO as well in post, but if you shot the shot correctly in the field, which here in this particular instance I have, you don't have to mess with that. And then I always make sure this highlight recovery function is checked just so it recovers some of the lost data uh, in your highlights. So the next thing you do, um, since we've already pulled Film Convert onto this node, I don't have to do it, but if you scroll all the way down to uh, film emulation in your library, you just click and drag the effect onto the node and then you will have this option here in your settings. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it back to standard. So immediately off the bat, your image is going to look like crap. It's gonna look incredibly wonky. You know, this is not a usable image. But the cool thing is, uh, you know, when you download Film Convert once, uh, you know, they have all of these different camera profiles and they're constantly updating them based off of uh, new cameras, new firmware, you know, all these new releases, and all of those are free to download. So once you've bought Film Convert, uh, you then have access to all of the different camera profiles, which is great if you're working with, you know, footage from Sony cameras, footage from Reds, from Canons, from Black Magics, and you want to be able to work with all of them, match all of them, you can do that. Uh, so it's very future proof in that way, which is great. So for this particular instance, all right, so the first thing that you're going to do is choose your camera profile. Now for this specific shot, we were working with the Pocket Cinema 6K, make sure you're in Film Gen 5, and then hit Apply. And you notice immediately off the bat, this becomes a, a really usable you know, footage. It really, really becomes a usable shot. You, know, you see between the uh, output, very flat image, to the Film Convert, uh, camera profile for black magic now the first thing that I go ahead and do is look at the different film stocks you know I love that film convert gives you these different options between Kodak and Fuji Kodak 5207 is one of my favorites that's what we've got here but I also love the Fuji 8543 and I think for this particular image we're gonna go with that one just to brighten up a little bit you can choose your film size uh, you know we're shooting with a super 35 but I like the look of the 35 millimeter full frame and then you can change your grain strength. So I like to keep mine about 15 to 20, just so you get a little bit of that natural film grain without it being uh, overwhelming. So after you've done that, the next step, and you know, if you look at this image here, we could just be done as is, but if you wanna make a few more tweaks, make it a little bit more your own, this is the next step is uh, Film Convert includes their own little set of color wheels here. A lot of times I like to bring down the highlights a little bit just so things aren't blown out. I can bump up those midtowns. Gotta get this back down to your set so it's not too grainy. And then I can kind of pull down some of the shadows and then we're getting a really, really clean cinematic looking shot. And then if you want, you can mess with some of the colors. I like to keep it fairly neutral. You know, it was a warm day in Central Park. I'm gonna pull in some of those magentas just so you can kind of get the feel of the sunset. And the next, you know, you can work with the film response here. This is actually looking pretty good, but if you want to fine tune it further, you know, you have those options as well. And then you've got the grain curve, which, you know, I really have not found myself messing with all too often right now. It essentially impacts how the grain shows up on your footage based off of the shadows, the blacks, midtones, highlights. You know, if you notice in the background here, when I pull up the shadows, the grain is coming up and down. I like to leave this at just a normal flat curve. I feel like that looks pretty good. Now, this is already pretty close to something that I'm happy with. Um, if you would like, you can sort of go in here and mess with the temperature, want to make it a little bit cooler. Um, you know, I feel like it looks pretty good right at around minus 460. 
and then I can scrub through here. You know, this is looking really, really clean. So, you know, this video, I really want to just make it a basic, you know, 101 of, you know, what I'm doing in terms of my color editing uh, with Film Convert and DaVinci right now. This has quickly become my go-to method of uh, color editing. I obviously have used a ton of LUTs in the past. I have the Buttery Master Collection. Um, Emotive Color has a uh, BMPCC to RE LUT, you know, and there are times where I really like using those LUTs. I've found that Film Convert gives me the ease of use that you get with the LUTs, but also uh, retains some of that personal control that I like to have where I can kind of mess with the footage and make it a little bit my own. Um, you know, this is definitely my go-to workflow at the moment. Uh, I'm sure as I become a better colorist, I might, you know, opt for doing everything manually. But as of right now, it really gives you the ability to make your footage look very buttery and cinematic in a way that is quickly, um, but does not sacrifice the quality of your grade. So for me, Film Convert, highly recommend it for anybody who is shooting with the BMPCC cameras specifically. Um, you know, it's also a great tool for working with Sony's Canons. Anything that you want to kind of you know, curb that digital look and give a bit more of that film stock like appeal. So that's it for me this week, guys. I just wanted to talk about something that is a huge component of filmmaking that sometimes can get a little bit overlooked. And, you know, there are so many different ways you can go about grading your footage. It is a very complex, you know, platform, especially with DaVinci Resolve. You know, the way that you connect with your viewer can drastically change based on the way that you grade your footage so you know for me it's been something that I've been playing around with for a really long time and I wanted to just kind of give a basic 101 uh, tutorial here you know of my workflow how I grade my footage you know how I input my footage do a whole the whole grade everything um, so you know in the future I'm gonna be doing some more in-depth tutorials in DaVinci Resolve you know more advanced color grading doing some fusion tutorials Pretty much all of the things that I utilize to create my films on a weekly basis, I'll be doing tutorials of those coming up. If you guys are liking these videos, please drop a like, hit subscribe, hit that notification bell. Uh, for all of you who've been following along and subscribed to the channel already, I really appreciate it. You guys make all of this possible. So I will see you guys next week. Keep an eye out, there's big news coming.